So we are here at the Tata Motors stall at Auto Expo 2023 and Tata Motors has really surprised a lot of us with their offerings. Yes, the Sierra is here in Fordo form. Of course, we've got the Curve which has been launched with uh, 1.2 petrol, the ICE version of it. But the big surprise is the Safari EV. Uh, that also has been electrified and to talk about this and more, we have Shailesh Chandra, the head of Tata Motors passenger car division, of course, the EV division as well. Silesh, congratulations. Thank I think you, Auto Expo, you. always a lot happening. Uh, but, you know, let's let, let's start first product-wise uh, with the uh, Sierra. I mean, you showed this as a concept. Uh, is this now true to production? I mean, are we are we ready to go? And, and how, how close is this to the one we're going to see in the showroom? This is very much intended to, intended to be brought in the year 2025. Last time when we had shown it, it was in form of a concept. This has matured a lot, which means when I say 2025, that means a lot of work has gone behind this. This is 90% production intent car. So this will be very close to what the real car would be when it will be launched in 2025. Right. And you know, all vehicles on stage, uh, obviously uh, with an EV powertrain, I've, before getting into the overall market, just want to talk a little bit on the uh, Safari EV as well. That was a big shocker because it's an ICE platform and from what I understand, original Land Rover D8 packaging, uh, you know, batteries would have been a problem. I mean, is there a challenge? Is there a compromise going from ICE uh, to EV? The platform been modified because since one gets is normally the battery capacity, uh, you know, you can't fit in the maximum like you would in a skateboard. No, you're absolutely right. See, Generation 1 products for us were pure conversion products, which means that you took away the fuel tank, you took away the powertrain and whatever space came, you had to package the battery as well as all the other electric powertrain items. But when we are moving now to Generation 2 products, this is where we are bringing the interventions on the floor, trying to create orthogonal spaces so that we can accommodate higher range give more battery pack, which is the advantage of a pure EV, right. by the way. But the ex you know that Harrier EV is more used for outdoorsy experience, which means range is a big, uh, it's a hygiene that you have to give a certain number of kilometers. So we had to bring, being a generation two EV, we had to bring intervention on the floor and certain other parts, which made it more electric ready and it can deliver you know, range which is required right. upwards of 500 kilometers or so. So 500 kilometer plus range on this and of course with electrification making it four wheel drive is a lot easier. You had limitations with the ICE vehicle clearly with power drain, propeller shaft, all that kind of transaxle, all that kind of thing. So again, four wheel drive a lot more possible with uh, a, a motor at the back. So one would imagine two motors each driving Absolutely. the front axle. Absolutely. Right. Yes. And uh, this is all being developed in house. Is that, uh, is that how it yes, is? Yes, it is being developed in house. And of course, we are working with our supplier partners uh, and uh, with uh, TACO, of course, for the battery pack and motor. We are, of course, sourcing from uh, one of the big suppliers right. of motors. And, you know, there's this talk about, uh, you know, local manufacturing to a high level. I just want to understand how is the supply chain developing? Because since one gets is demand is growing, models are coming, but the supply chain is not keeping up uh, as quickly as possible. And I think the key component still is the battery cell, which has to be imported. So just your thoughts on how you see the supply chain panning out in relation to the demand and the cadence of products being launched. Right. See, good thing is that uh, the government itself, uh, based on all the incentives that it is extending, whether you talk about PLI or whether you talk about fame, it has clearly laid down, if you have to really avail this incentive, what should be a domestic value addition, which means that you may start with low value addition, but you have to go deeper and deeper into localization, which is 50% without the sales is what has been defined as of now. We are one of the manufacturers which completely meet that requirement. Right. And therefore, it is about the battery pack right now. It is about the motor assembly testing and the, you know, housings and all, you know, certain number of parts that you would have localized, certain power electronics item we are trying to localize. So all this has happened. Now, the big one remains the cell. Because this is the biggest some, one. Some announcements of that going forward? Tata Motors would not be getting into cell manufacturing. Right. But at group. a group level, uh, our chairman has already given a comment on that, that we are getting into cell manufacturing. And it will be one of the Tata entities which is going to invest into that. Right. And we are going to be the anchor customer. We have been in intense discussion with the group which is leading that. And uh, this is one area where 
of course, startup group would like to actively play. Right. And, you know, just looking at the overall EV market, we've spoken about this. Uh, you've, uh, you know, really kind of, you've grown the market. This is your, actually monopolized the market. Just going forward, uh, how do you find uh, demand panning out? You know what the actual demand is. Uh, obviously, the sales numbers may not reflect that because still of supply chain issues and, and uh, overall, uh, you know, uh, let's say supply issues. Just your snapshot on 2023 and when do you think the defining time will come for EVs? Will it be 2025 when your models, everyone else's models are going to be in the market? You know, there are there were a lot of barriers. You know, two, three years back when we started the journey, uh, ranges were low. You know, we started with a 100 kilometer real range vehicle, if you remember. And a low Letting voltage. EV, low voltage. And uh, Nexon EV was the first product which was real practical product, which really caught into the consideration of Indian consumers. And it is, if you if you generally see when you launch a car, it starts with a very high demand and then it tapers down over life cycle. Just see the sales, you know, uh, you know, path of what Nexon has seen. We started with some 200, 300 a month. It is now selling nearly 3,000 a month. Uh, so that is the kind of uptake that we have seen. And this is mainly because, because same incentive is not available for a personal segment as you know. So incentive right. has not been the major reason except for, you know, certain state that like Maharashtra right. and Gujarat right. had extended it and really it helped. Right. But uh, the other big factor is that the early adopters have been very expressive about their experience. They have been talking about their practical experience, uh, talking about their charging experience because many people think that if there is no charging station, then you don't have any way of charging your car. But home right. charging is becoming more and more understood. People are becoming aware. And therefore, that barrier has also gone away. But therefore, if, you know, once you see these barriers going away even further, today if you ask somebody why you're not buying an electric vehicle, it will be for two reasons. One, that on the highways, they are not seeing it. So they don't feel comfortable that I can use it also when I have to do an intercity drive. Right. The second reason would be that the range is still not in the very acceptable zone. But now you're seeing the high range cars which are going to come. So that barrier is also going to go away. See, fast forward three years from now, the charging infrastructure will be, you know, much more than what right. you're seeing. Maybe every right. 7,500 kilometers you're going to see. And then right. you ask yourself, and maybe you will go be able to go to Mahabaleshwar more often. Yeah, without having to charge. <laughs> without having to charge. Or even if you have to charge, there is yeah. a fast charger That's which right. is available. Yeah. Then you will ask yourself, why if EV is giving you the lowest running cost, it is giving you the best performance, it is giving you an eight-year warranty, better durability, lower maintenance yeah. cost. Right. Why you would buy anything else. Yeah. So I think therefore the penetration is going to drastically increase. Demand should not be a problem. As you are bringing products in different affordability levels, different body styles, depending on what customer yeah. likes, this is going to grow. Every year the the segment has been, category has been growing two, three times. So you just on the growth side, yeah. can you predict or forecast? What is your forecast yes. for growth this year, 25-30? So FY23, you would see nearly 55-60,000. EVs would get sold in the car category and I'm sure that it would cross 100,000 in the next financial year. Right. Uh, that has been the growth part because there are more models also That's which are true. getting launched. Absolutely. And there's greater acceptance of electric vehicles. And you know, talking about the acceptance, you know, the three things given your now, let's say, uh, feedback and experience with customers, you've got uh, Tiago at one end and Nixon at one end, quite all there in the mass segment, but really at different price points. Looking at the sales and demand, out of the top three, what is uh, the, let's say, the least concern? Is it range or, or let's say, what is the biggest barrier still? Is it still price? Is it range or is it infra? Price is not a barrier at all. So, price is not the barrier? I don't think price is a barrier. Otherwise, you would not have got a 10,000 booking on the first day for Tiago EV. No, what or I mean even... is in relation to Nexon and Tiago. So, if you look at it that way, Tiago might the price might be, uh, uh, let's say, either a barrier or, uh, let's say, an advantage. Tiago price is an advantage, for sure. I mean, right. that's the reason. But uh, as far as range is concerned, Nexon also comes with a higher range, for right. example. That's why it has definitely more takers Got for it. a higher right. range. Right. But for Tiago, I think, you know, people, especially who are looking for a city drive car, Got it. if they would find it very, very, right. uh, very logical purchase for them, especially the people who are buying second car or third car. So, so, so by your thing, Nexon still maximum demand. So, what it goes to show is that they are happy to, uh, they want range and they don't mind buying a, uh, paying a higher price for it. That's the trend that we are seeing, at least for 
the early adopters and early majority. Right. And for those customers who are living in states where you don't have charging infra, you know, for example, in UP, or uh, you know, you are seeing people going more for a max, whereas as compared to Maharashtra and Gujarat, where people right. are going for the prime, the lower, Got because it. there is a charging infra which is available. Interesting. So, so depends that. where the charging Correct. infra Correct. also driving which way then. Correct. Uh, is switching to, but it also shows that range which is a big anxiety today as right. the charging infra grows it's less it will be lesser in anxiety yeah, that's very interesting trend yeah. that's shaping up yeah. ashail is switching to ice engines uh, ic uh, uh, you know big announcement from you today uh, the curve is basically with a 1.2 uh, turbo petrol uh, or this car is also getting uh, uh, let's say a, a petrol uh, let's say option uh, which you just come to know uh, so you know is it to be honest you've been a little behind in the ice game looking at your portfolio right now with modern turbo petrol engines. So, you, you've come in there. Clearly, ICE still has a huge market, uh, which uh, you do need to address. So, I think, is this now an intent that you have to focus on ICE a lot as well? The reason why we have uh, unveiled the 1.2 litre GDI and 1.5 litre GDI is for two reasons. One, that if I'm playing in ICE, it has to be more emission friendly, more fuel efficient. And GDI technology helps you achieve that. Yeah. So that is one big, if we, because we have committed also, uh, we are aiming at uh, achieving net carbon zero by 2040. That is also something which we announced yesterday. Right. Which means essentially that you have to really accelerate our EV growth. That in any case we are doing and you are seeing the actions behind that. Right. But it is also a reality that there is a longer duration for which this transition is going to play out. And we are one of the few markets that's growing in ICE Correct. and could be last man standing in ICE. Correct. So, just take 6-7 million if that is the demand in 2030. Even if it is 30% uh, electric, you are talking about 1.5-2 million, but still right. the you know, 4-5 million market is for ICE. Which is more so than it's today. Grow. Yeah. More than today. So, therefore, that's also going to grow, but we have to ensure that we work on more emission-friendly technologies. So, that's why there's that's, that's one intent. The second reason is that as you are seeing all the products, these are now getting into more than 4-meter cars. The right. bigger SUVs. Correct. Our center of gravity of our portfolio was less than 4 meters. Now it's moved above that. It is moving so naturally you need, you know, higher powered engines also. Right. And therefore it is a logical, you know, it's logical if I have to play in that segment in the ice. Right. I have to bring these engines. Right. And that's the whole intent behind this engine. Right. And we'll strongly play in, right. in the segments in ice yeah. where the market is going right. fast. Uh, Shailesh, to be honest, a little weakness, diesel. You've just got one, 1.5. Uh, I don't know whether that is going towards SCR, but I don't know whether Delphi is doing that uh, or, uh, you know, uh, or I just want to get your sense, how are you meeting RD with this engine and you don't have a big 2 litre, you have the 2 litre for the uh, Harrier, but it's now not, no longer as competitive, it's a Fiat source engine. So, would it be fair to say that in diesel, a little bit more work to do? So, you know, we have a 1.5 litre trail engine for... Uh uh, less than 4 meter cars, yeah. we have seen Nexon, even for Altros we are using that. These are the two cars where we are using the diesel. And uh, as we are transitioning to the RD, we have been able to find a very cost effective solution. Let me not get into the tech part which you asked. Let I talk about it once you know, I the heard cars are... I heard you are managing without SCR. So, let's, let's see, but I am saying that it is a more cost effective way of achieving that. Right. And uh, that means that the phase two for us or the RD BS6 phase two, the diesel see, should see uh, through its life yeah. in but, these products. But Altros clearly the demand in that is not as much it's for straight, diesel. Yeah, as it's not, it's not so as intense as the SUV. Yeah. So the 1.5 will be mainstay will be the next one. Mainstay will next one, but Altros will also have. Right. We are not discontinuing in Altros. As right. There has been speculation that we will be discontinuing. Right. We will be continuing in Altros also. As far as the two liter engine is concerned, we will go ahead with that. But you know, the reality, Thormas, is that after BS7, diesel will really face stress right. because the value proposition of a diesel after BS7, where the emiss emissions, irrespective of whether it is gasoline or a diesel, it has to be the same, right. which creates a lot of technology interventions for the diesel and it will slowly you will start seeing after whenever BS7 is implemented, after that the diesel will be under pressure, then it will be only for those customers who really are in deep love with diesel. Right. 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 So, given that case, we would only want to do now incremental investments in diesel wherever it is needed. Right. Right. And uh, if diesel discontinues here, right, 
that is where the 1.5 liter TGDI yeah. and all will fill it. But fair to say, I mean, I just want to press you a bit. Not having your own engine does have its limitation and challenges vis-a-vis -vis development, cost, that sort of thing. I think it was, it could have been an issue, but I think the relationship with P.A. Stellantis has been great. We have been able to manage it. Definitely reduces the agility to do certain actions, which right. you could have done very fast yourself. Fair enough. And more costly. So those are the limitations. But you can but still then, do it. But then it avoids a big investment also in a technology which might be declining. Yeah, as a limited right. shelf life now. Yes. I think no one in their right mind would be in investing in a diesel engine in 2022. Yes. yes. Right. So, so now you will, whatever you will do on diesel right. is for the purpose of regulation. And if you're extending the life or you would do for, you know, say quality reasons or customer, you know, preference shifting or etc. So that's the investment that will go. Right. Into. And uh, last question, uh, Shailesh, uh, just looking at the overall perspective going forward. Uh, lot of directions, I mean, you know, a lot of things simultaneously, ICE, uh, EV, uh, competition as well. Uh, I mean, what are the main challenges right now? Is it really working within a regulatory environment that's constantly getting tougher? I mean, CAFE, uh, you know, RDE, that sort of thing. And does that put a lot of uh, pressure, even, let's say, product development as well? I mean, uh, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, you have to turn these new, with the new regulations, a lot of, let's say, crunch and maybe even bottlenecks in that. Not only from your side, even the testing agencies are full up. Challenges are many for us. First challenge is, this is the dec decade of transition, right? From a regulation perspective, even nice, I'm saying, just take eyes. The interventions on the regulation is much faster and more frequent, if I may use that word. And therefore, you have to invest, you have to spend your resource time and you know money in those activities and that is for all the good reasons i'm saying ultimately everything is translating into or folding into two mega trends which is the climate change issue and the net carbon zero and safety increasing safety i think these are the right trends and spends are high resources are also going and the second big trend is electrification this is also a part of the whole right. you know, net carbon zero journey so definitely it's a big challenge there is also a challenge of, you know, the supply side, right. which has become so volatile, uncertain. And uh, while these are challenges, some companies will make it an opportunity. I think that's what you've done. So with, uh, we are at least yeah. endeavoring to yeah, do yeah, that. I it. think every transition can be an opportunity to grow or it can be to download spiral also. So. Well, I think what's clearly been seen is that with uh, COVID, uh, I think you all, it kind of, you all won that period with it as they say you know when the going gets tough uh, the tough get going i think uh, the way you all managed uh, everything during the covid crisis and beyond clearly the numbers show that you all have really managed it much better than the others and uh, really fantastic looking at what you've got here uh, wish you a lot more success and last question half a million now one million when i don't know but uh, you know we'll go every step every year Right. And uh, we had not imagined that, you know, three years back uh, or two and a half years back when we uh, were at the lowest point in our I history, that. I would yeah. say, yeah. that we would reach 5 million. Our ambition 500, was 500,000 yeah. uh, in such a short period of time. It has happened faster than what we had aspired for. Right. So, you know, the, the learning for us is that if you keep, you know, being agile, if you're working with speed, if you're managing relationships on the you know, on the foundations of trust and transparency within the organization, outside the organization. With all stakeholders. I think uh, everything comes together to make things happen faster. So the journey does not end. As you say, 500,000 is a milestone for us. With all the products, the intent should be very clear with the acquisition of Ford plant. Right. It just, uh, it just is a statement of what is our intent. Right. So the whole team will be working towards right. achieving more. Well, here's to 1 million. Hope it comes sooner than uh, expected. Congratulations. I'm not saying Chinese. that. <laughs> one million. But well, I'm yes. saying one million years to one million. You'd definitely and, uh, like to see that day. And uh, congrats once again. Great lineup. And uh, that's Shailesh Chandra, Tata Motors, uh, head of the passenger business. Thank you. Uh, congrats once again. Thank you. Thank you.